Right then, so I'm just gonna talk you through the insight testing, how I got on, what's the point of it, what can we get from it, and is it worth doing? My name's Jack from Botch Nutrition, and I help recreational sportsmen and women understand exactly what they need to do to perform, look, and feel their best. So insight testing, what actually is it? What insights have done is they come up with this really, really powerful analytical software when we can actually remotely test cyclists on your bike if you've got a power meter or if you've got a smart trainer and based off there we can build your metabolic profile. So similar to the testing I do in house, what we're looking to get is your VO2 max, your anaerobic threshold, something called your VLA max, which I'll explain a little bit later, as well as carb and fat combustion rate. You might be asking, is this accurate? In short, yes, it has been validated and some of the software they've got really is very impressive. Why not just do this instead of something like a VO2 test? What this does is it measures your output or the watts that you're producing. Now, don't get me wrong, this is massively important because it directly impacts your results. If you can produce more watts at different rates, you're going to be fast. However, this output does depend on how you're feeling that day, how you're fueled, are you rested, were you hydrated, what type of training have you done on that block. This is the reason why if you can also gather some internal data, so VO2 and lactate, bringing them together will provide you the perfect puzzle which will ensure you will get results. However, unfortunately, you can't do any proper testing at the moment, which is why this powerful performance decode is such an incredible bit of software to use if you only can do this remotely if you're a cyclist and if you care about your results. What does the actual testing entail? What I need to do is a number of all out tests over different lengths. Essentially what we're looking for is critical power or the amount of watts that you can sustain for a given time. Once you've got this, we can actually prescribe training zones as well as predictably see when you're going to fatigue at certain watt numbers. However, it's hard as I found out. So the idea with this, you can actually spit it over a couple of days. However, I just went for the Zwift protocol, plugged it in, went for it, an hour and a half. Let's see how I got on. All right there, I've got to be quiet. It's only 10 to six. I get really, really stupid on that. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the inside testing today. It's meant to be tough. A series of all out efforts. I think it's about an hour and a half in total. Let's see how we get on. Just finished the all out three minute test. That's really few bits in that. Fuck. Still got a six and ten minute effort to go. 15 minute recovery though. Let's see how we go. Oh. Oh. Oh, fuck. Six minutes. Oh. Fuck me. My lungs are burning, not actually. This does actually hurt. Let's look COVID. Fuck. One more of 10 minutes. Virtual access is so much easier than this. Oh my god. Oh. 10 minutes done. Fuck me. I think that was a little bit easier. Apart from that. Actually, no. She's about to try and hold a rhythm. Oh dear. Right, okay, so let's see um, what I've actually got with my metabolic profile. Again, similar to the testing that I do, what we're looking for is your VO2 max, anaerobic threshold, fat max, carbohydrate max, and VLA max are slightly something different. I'm not going to go over what these mean because go and watch one of the videos. We know that all these markers are massively important, but the the big thing from this is we can quickly see what I need to improve. The one that I haven't really spoken about before is your VLA max, or your maximum glycolytic power. And essentially what this means is like how quickly you combust or you use carbohydrates. Now this is good for sprinters. So a higher glycolytic rate or your ability to use more carbs quickly is great for sprinting. But the problem with this is that a product of carbohydrates or using carbohydrates is lactate. So what happens if you produce or use loads of carbohydrates if you shed loads of lactate? So if you're going to be an endurance athlete, say some like a climber, long distance cyclist, even say runner, you don't want this to be very high. So this is where you're actually looking for lower in some cases. The other interesting one is actually carbohydrate metabolism. Now really what we can take from this is like how many carbohydrates you're going to be have or need for the watts that you're going to be doing. So this really just kind of gives you a profile in what you need to work at. So what we can see with me is that this is based on recreational. So this is not this is going to depend on your level. So if you if I compare myself to say like an amateur, it's that's not particularly good. 
However, what we can see is at what percentage my anaerobic threshold is of my Virtamax. So again, I've spoken about this before. So your fractional utilization, if this is too low, like it is here, I know that I need to pull this up higher. So basically kind of my FTP is 280, my Virtamax is 530, 553. What's actually really interesting about this is this does actually align or very similar to what I did when I did my VO2 test about, what, six weeks ago. So we can see that it's probably fairly accurate with this. And the anaerobic threshold has come up. Mine was about 230, if you can remember from before. So we, my training clearly is working, but it's still a little bit depressing. When you start looking at your fingerprint, you see these really low figures. So definitely a lot of work to be done, uh, especially my fat max. Again, we knew this. We saw this from the metabolic testing before, is that I basically don't produce much fat at all. So long distance riding, which I haven't been doing yet, potentially looking at the diet a bit more, is going to help this. So low characteristics, I'm not going to go through this now, okay, um, I will go through these in further detail, but really by the, from this, I can predictably see what I need to do to move forward. And even things like, I can actually kind of see exactly what my interval sessions need to look like, or what watts I need to hold, and also the recovery as well, based on um, the lactate that I'm going to produce. So I'm really actually excited to see how I get on. We've also got the training zones as well. Some of you might see this and be a little bit confused. It's a bit different to the standard, say, five zone or seven zone model. But really, once you understand what each of these means, it really does make sense. And again, I'm excited to kind of plug this into training peaks and also the Zwift to work on some of these areas. So the next thing is that's really useful is you can see your calorie burn depending on the watts that you want to produce. And from this, we can also determine how many carbs and how much fat you're going to need per hour. So this is incredibly useful. And the good thing about this as well, if you are going to test regularly, when you're, say, coming up to an event that you want to do, we can say, see what your numbers are just before the event. And then you can see exactly how many carbohydrates you're going to be able to take on at certain or need at certain intensity. So really, really great feature. You might be asking, well, how is this possible? How is this accurate? Now, in, in fairness, because it's using a power meter that's fairly predictable in terms of your calorie expenditure because we know how many calories it takes to produce certain amounts of watts and we can do this from uh, the number of litres of oxygen as well so it is actually pretty accurate in this case the, the, the big difference really between say external factors like producing watts compared to internal factors of how the actual body is working is it's going to depend on the day so if we can say take some internal measurements as well, like lactate or up VO2, then obviously we can combine it with this. We're absolutely laughing, so I can't wait uh, to open properly. But nonetheless, if you're someone who can't get to me, if you're a cyclist, if you want to take that kind of, if you want to take your performance further, you want to understand kind of where you are now, this is going to be an absolute game changer. I'm so excited to be offering it. Great thing about this is we can actually track it over time. So although one test gives you a good um, insight into kind of where you are now really what we want to see is are you improving so let's see where you are let's see what your strengths and weaknesses are based off this we can give you a plan moving forward when you come back to test again in six to eight weeks we can again see if it's working and constantly look to improve make sure the zones are right make sure your fuel is right so you're always going to get better so as you can see, this gave me some really insightful results. I'm really excited to kind of put them into to practice and see where this goes. What is interesting is that the VO2 max does align with my metabolic car, although not Panoe. Don't use that. And it has also showed that my anaerobic threshold has improved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data, pop it into a next four to say six weeks training plan and see how we get on. If you're interested in getting some of this remote testing done, then make sure you get in touch. I am running an amazing special offer. Remember, you can get 50% off this for this four weeks only. Okay, so if you wanted to get on board on that, check out the link below or shoot me a message. Until next time, stay healthy.